Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a really fun project for you. We are going to explore different metallic um, media from um, your crayons or pastels that are metallic to acrylic paints to pearl powders. That way you can see how you can get a very similar effect using the supplies you have. And I'll also talk about some supplies that are actually kind of the same as the other ones so you don't go by spending your money on things twice. Uh, this video is brought to you by artneco.com. If you mention the Frugal Crafter when you order, they will refund you 10% of your order so you get 10% discount which is really nice or free shipping over 50 whichever discount is greater and um, I'm gonna be giving away these lovely peacock stamps these peacock feather stamps that I'm gonna be using today on my website the frugalcrafter.wordpress.com so make sure you click over there and leave a comment for a chance to win you gotta leave the comment on my blog though because um, I have no way of contacting people that leave comments here on YouTube but on my blog I can see your email addresses on the back end and I can send you an email that way you know you won I don't expect you to stalk me for the next week to see if I've announced your name. So what we're going to do today is uh, use a couple different supplies and um, I want to do this because certain supplies will work better in different applications and also um, you can substitute quite a bit in the craft room so you don't have to go buy every little thing that comes down the pike. I went ahead and prepared some cardstock, so I took some of the thick recollections um, the cardstock, which is what I really love for card bases, and I made a five and a half an inch square card. So this is five and a half by eleven, folded in half. I'm just going to set that aside for right now. I took the black cardstock and I cut it at five and a quarter by five and a quarter, so I'd have a layering piece. Now this is a corner punch that makes little notches because I want to go around it with some um, some metallic thread which is another way to accent a card if you want metallics. I'm hoping that this will punch through this because this is really heavy cardstock. Oh it is good. I've had this punch for a long time. It's really nice if you like to incorporate if you have like pretty embroidery threads or um, metallic threads or metallic strings or anything like that you want to incorporate. It makes a really wonderful place to feed those um, those threads through. And I like to punch before I do any media because um, sometimes it will the paper gets a little damp. Whenever your paper is at all damp it doesn't punch well. So if you're trying to use a punch and your paper just is not working, blast it for a few seconds with a heat gun or a hair dryer, something like that to wick away any moisture um, and then it will punch a lot better. It'll also die cut a lot better if you're trying to use it in like a um, an electronic die cut machine. So I'm going to set these scraps aside for right now because we're going to do those with different media and what we're going to start with is our acrylic paint and you can use craft paint for this. Um, I'm using the Turner Acryl Gouache just because I happen to really like this. I've got a couple different shades. Oh, that one's separated in its container. I, so that's separated. I'm actually going to wipe away that binder. Um, so if that happens to you, sometimes if paint sits too long, the, uh, the binder separates. So I just, oh gosh. I'm not going to use that one because I don't think that one's going to work very well. I'm going to have to, um, next time I want to use that, squeeze out a bunch and uh, I will have to um, mix it up with a palette knife, I guess. So that's weird. Usually two paints don't do that too much, but I'm just going to go ahead with this turquoise and blue and I'm squeezing them like on my craft mat um, a couple inches apart and I'm going to use my brayer to um, ink up a stamp. Now if you want you could totally use um, a sponge like a makeup sponge or something for this but uh, I find that a brayer will make my stamp a little easier to clean and I'll get a nicer image. So I'm just going to slide that out of the way. You can see my brayer is evenly coated and I just want to apologize right now if there's any noises. Um, in my home because it is a weekend and it's summer vacation so it's probably going to be lots of noises. So I've got lots of uh, even coverage there and I'm working on a um, a pad of newsprint so that it will give me a little bit of squish because you can see I did not mount these stamps. And there I've got a very subtle uh, subtle stamping almost like I used an in ink. So if you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of ink pads this is a great way to get some use out of your stamp. Now I know this is probably not going to line up perfectly so what I'm going to do is um, on purpose I am going to turn it and I'm just going to make almost like a patchwork. So if you think that you might have a hard time lining up your stamp exactly then um, then do it imperfectly on purpose. You're not going to see this whole background together, so um, so I think that's fine. Maybe I'll turn. Is that how I had? That's how I had it the first time. So I'm going to turn it this way here. 
And if you're finding you're having a hard time stamping, um, you can put a piece of fun foam under it and it'll give you a little bit better of a uh, of an impression. So there we've got a nice um, metallic image. We haven't added a ton of media to this, so it is going to it's going to dry really quickly. And then for cleaning your stamp, since we used a brayer, we didn't really get any any ink, any paint in the nooks and crannies. We can actually wipe it with a baby wipe. But if you're going to use a brush or a sponge to apply the paint to your stamp, you really want to use like a uh, a toothbrush and some water to clean your stamp. And I probably will do that just in case when I'm all done here. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to set that wet baby wipe on there and, and keep it wet. And then I'll wash it out in the sink later. But uh, just an old toothbrush works great for that. So I'm going to set this aside. And this is your, um, your example number one for how to get a metallic look. So the second thing I want to show you is, um, oh, and by the way, you want to clean your brayer up too. You don't want to let that paint dry in your brayer or that will cause problems. So I'm just going to wipe that off right now. And uh, the reason this brayer is black is this is the one I use for paint and black ink. And then I have another brayer that I use for colored medium or colored ink. This is, But this is my paint one. I keep them separate. You can just roll off any extra. Okay. Wipe this off too before I get into some trouble. I should probably have edited this out, but I really wanted to get this giveaway up because it was last month's giveaway. So I'm already running a little behind and I know any moment my kids are going to be up and making all kinds of noise. All right. The next thing I want to show you is using your oil pastels or gelatos or water soluble oil pastels, water soluble gelatos, watercolor crayons, anything like that. Um, so this is what the gelatos look like and we're going to work on white this time, but I will grab a scrap of black just so I can show you what it looks like on black too, because metallic things usually do look a little bit better on black. We're going to use this big peacock stamp here and um, I'm going to use a combination. So when I'm going to do stamping like this, I like to wet my stamp and I'm just going to use my spray bottle and I'm going to spray it off camera so I don't get my, um, so I don't get my papers wet and then I'll just kind of spread the water around with my fingers. I just recently got up, so hopefully I don't sound too crazy. And then I am going to color with my um, water soluble pastels. And again, you can use your, you know, um, these are from an art. These are from an art store. These are the Mungio ones. The <clears throat> the gelatos work well too. Let me just use this purple gelato since I have it right here. And um, the wetter it is, the more artistic, more painty it'll look. The drier it is, the more crisp it'll look more like the uh, brayer and acrylic paint. Get some of that green in there. Maybe a little bit of gold. I have a gold gelato. Why don't I just use that? Or gel sticks. The gel sticks work. It's the same as the gelatos. And basically throw in any of the colors you plan on using and you're going to be fine. And you could even throw in like, um, if you felt like you didn't have enough contrast, you could like do a little bit of black and that could help. Um, define it a little bit, especially on the white. So I can see that this is really wet, so I don't need to spritz it again. And I'm just going to go and press straight down on my white cardstock. And you get a very painterly, uh, painterly image. Sometimes you get um, your second image is better, or sometimes you just want to maybe just touch up a little bit of the color. Like I, I could see that a lot of that green is gone. Going a little bit of that green. Sometimes it takes a, a couple tries and you can sometimes get a few impressions out of each one, which is nice. So I'll try this, this gold in there. I feel like that might not be wet enough. So let's try that there and we can see. And so, you know, you get this very watercolor look. So it's not going to be perfect. Each one's going to be a little bit different. So let's do it on black. I know I need a little bit more water on here. So I'm just giving a little spritz off camera. And then I'm just going to reapply my colors. And, you know, you can play with a little bit and, you know, change things up a little bit every time. But they all pretty much work the same. Watercolor crayons, your neo colors, anything like that. Any sort of uh, media that's going to kind of be thick on your stamp. And um, I'll just stamp on this. This isn't quite big enough, but you'll get the idea. And then on black, when it dries, you actually get a pretty um, metallic sheen. So I'm going to set that aside. We'll look at that again in a little bit. And this you don't have to rush to clean because the uh, that you can always reconstitute that. Another thing that you can do with the gel sticks and the oil pastels is to work on embossed cardstock. Uh, black embossed cardstock works really well. You can see how well the metallic colors stand up 
on the um, on the embossed area. Now, if you're not going to blend it in and you're going to use it just like this, I do recommend that you hit it with a little hairspray because um, it'll absorb for like to a point, but it's not going to be um, completely. Um, it's a, it, it'll still be a little bit greasy even after it dries when you put it on this thick so you can either spray it with a little clear spray paint you could um, you know go over it with a little matte medium and a brayer whatever you want but that's a, just a really pretty way to get kind of like a um, like a pressed tin look like a metallic tin look so there's a couple ways that you can use these you could also brayer over your metallic paint on the embossed cardstock too and then you don't even have to worry about sealing it so i'm um, hoping this is giving you some ideas where you can use the stuff you already have and the last thing i want to share with you is how to use your um, metallic powders and this can be pearlex perfect pearls it could be um, metallic loose metallic eyeshadow or even any metallic eyeshadow from the dollar store any of that's going to work great the higher mica concentration um, the more sparkly it will be so if you're buying the eyeshadow look for for eyeshadow that has mica as the first ingredient and uh, you'll get a nice sparkly look so what I'm going to do here is use a Versamark ink pad you could also use glycerin or any other embossing ink and you're going to ink up that stamp really well and you can see that it's a little shiny that's how we can tell it's inked up and you don't need to wash this off your stamp it'll actually condition it and, and keep it really nice for you I'm going to press that straight down try not to wiggle it and then oops I just got a little grime on there for my finger but that's not a big deal and then I can use um, any of these colors. I think I'll start with that blue. It doesn't take much. And then I think I'll just kind of wipe off my brush. These are actually dollar, these are the brushes that come with the powdered eyeshadow. You go over with the green. And just a little smidgen of that purple. And then once I got all the colors down, I will kind of work it in a little bit. Oh my gosh, I love this technique, it's so pretty. Now, the only downside to this, because it is quick and easy and you don't really have any cleanup, uh, the only downside to this is that it's not as durable. And if you're using Pearl X or eyeshadow, you are gonna wanna spray this with something just to seal it. Um, the Versamark will grab it, but it could eventually come off. So, um, so that's just kind of a, a warning there. If you're using Perfect Pearls, that has a binder in it, so you don't have to worry about that. Make sure you cap up your little pots well when you're done so moisture can't get in and so you don't spill them. But um, I don't recommend if you're just crafting to get the big jars of this, I'd get a sampler pack that has a bunch of different colors and I'll link to one in the video description. Um, because I've been using these for 20 years, 20 years, the same set it goes forever it's like glitter it i think it multiplies when i'm not looking so unless you have like a business where you are metallic sheening everything i would not get the big jars of this because i can't imagine how anyone would go through it so this is such a pretty look it's quick and easy and um you know once you've bought these they're gonna last you probably your whole crafting career so they're pretty inexpensive the only thing i'd recommend is that you do not mix your powders um if you're gonna mix a couple for uh for a project just mix enough for your project because i think that if you do get a, some mixes that they could tarnish each other like embossing powders do mine have lasted perfectly uh for the last 20 years so i've kept them all in their original container so I just want to put that out there so I want you to look at this uh, one that's dry now the one from the um, watercolor crayons versus the one that was on white they're both dry you can, so you can really see their color um, I really think it looks great on the black but it's also nice to kind of have this um, this version as well with the watercolor crayons it's nice because you can play with um, with them in different ways so I can just kind of go along the edge one of the techniques I really like with the watercolor crayons is to take a baby wipe and I uh, use that as my painting medium. So what I mean is instead of grabbing a brush and a bucket of water, I can just take this baby wipe and I can go over and I can soften the edges. I can paint with it a little bit. I could do a stencil on top and just uh, spread it around with a baby wipe and it dries almost instantly so my paper doesn't buckle. Uh, you do have to be careful if you're going, you don't want to go right on top of the image that you just did or you will smear some of that color but I think that gives me a nice painterly look and uh, it gives me kind of like a little bit of a frame to it. So I cleaned up my space a little bit and now it's ready time to uh, put our card together um, and so 
I can decide that I want to alter my card base if I want to. So that looks really white next to this, and I really liked what I did with the um, with the pastel and this little panel here. So I'm going to do the same thing to my card base. Um, now the thing I do want to warn you about any of these oil pastels, watercolor crayons, um, any sort of waxy, oily media, even though they're water soluble, they still have like a, a waxy oil to them. Um, when you are using them, I recommend if you think you're going to be gluing something on top that you don't put this media where your glue is going to be. So I know I'm going to be gluing a panel down in the center. So I am just getting the edges here because I don't want anything that's going to make my card um, not stick. You know, I don't want my card to come apart in the mail. I don't have to worry about keeping that clean because I know that's going to be covered. Um, so I do encourage you to give this a try. And like this set here of like pastels, it was under $20. It's And it's going to last me probably a lifetime. So it's a very affordable medium because you don't have to worry about like your paint separating or it drying up or anything so kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at supplies to add to your stash what is going to last the longest for you so here's a string i'm going to show you that technique i talked about and um i want a little piece of that of uh, scotch tape here the reason for that is because i want a place where i can start my string and kind of keep it in place on the back of my card so i'm just going to tape that down right there and then these little notches allow me to catch the string so I can make these really pretty little borders. So I just went into that notch. I'm going to go into the next notch, pull that across. And see, it just gives me a beautiful, perfect straight line. If I tried to glue that down in a straight line on the edge of my card, I would make a mess. If I tried to do that with glitter glue, I know I would make a mess. Um, so this just gives me a way to kind of have a dry medium and give me a, a really perfect border. And I picked this punch up. It's by Mar Marvi Uchida. I don't think I paid more than $5 for it. And uh, I think it's still being made. So I know if I was clever, I'd probably have stuck them both under that same piece of tape, but I'm just going to grab another piece because um, I'm not that coordinated this early in the morning. <laughs> and I'll stick that right down here and then glue this to my panel. And, you know, it's always, a, this just didn't warp at all with the paint, but if you do notice you have any warping, just go really generous with the adhesive so, um, so it won't pop off your card on you. All right, so then I've got this that I can work with. I've also got this pretty strip, which I actually really like. I think I'm going to put that down and um, tuck it under that string because I think it's kind of a pretty look. See what I told you about the uh, the sealing? Um, so I should really seal that. I guess I'll have to just hit it with a little hairspray afterwards because I did not do that yet and you can kind of see on the um, on the table how it how it came right off of that card. So just kind of keep that in mind. And actually I might be able to just kind of go over it with that baby wipe. Well, let me just go over it with the tissue a little bit. It will smear it out a little bit but it will kind of rub it into the paper and help lock it down. So you either kind of need pressure or water, or you do need to go over it with a sealer to um, to make those a little more permanent. I'll probably just blast the whole card with hairspray when I'm done. So that's what that's my plan anyway. And I always trim from the back. Helps me get a nice straight line. And then this is going to go right down. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that. And remember, we're adhering on the acrylic. Acrylic is perfect. It doesn't give me a greasy residue that I have to work with. So that is nice. If I had done this with gelatos, this black panel, it'd be really difficult to adhere stuff down onto it. And for my last um, little embellishment, I am just going to make this into like a faux postage stamp. I'm going to glue this onto a piece of white cardstock scrap. And I was going to use black brads on the corners there, but I already adhered that down, so I'm not going to. I'm going to use the back side of this because I need I need something clean. And I'm going to use my postage edge scissors just to notch this out because I couldn't find it. I had a little postage die, but I'm thinking I might have gotten rid of it because I couldn't find it with my other stuff. Or maybe I lent it out. I'm not sure. I'm just going to trim this out. Gotta love decorative scissors, they are so useful. I'm gonna ink the edges of this, but this time I'm just gonna scribble some of that crayon down there on my mat and then just get my edges this way so I don't get any get any big gobs of color where I don't want it. I've put double-sided tape already on the back, so I'm just gonna um, kind of cluster the things together here. And I've got this little Chinese game piece 
that I'm going to put uh, right here. So I got to make sure I have my calligraphy right set up. And that's all there is to it. Please go to my website, my blog, leave a comment on the post featuring this card for your chance to win the stamps that I used. Thanks to Art Deco for sponsoring this video. And until next time, happy crafting.